Hello, good evening. Welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. It's six o'clock on Tuesday, the 22nd of October. I'm reading Common Worship Daily Prayer, Evening Prayer on Tuesday in Ordinary Time. You'll find the words in the book, eponymously titled, towards the beginning, after prayer during the day. Uh, Evening Prayer on Tuesday. Also at the Church of England's website, a Remus Daily Prayer, downloadable as app for Apple or Android device. You're very welcome to join me electronically too, interactively on Zoom. The Blythe Valley Church's website and Facebook page have the codes. Slightly less so, you may watch and or engage, I guess, through the comments section if you wish uh, on Facebook. It stays there as a video for you to watch at your leisure and or audio. Um, that's available on my Dominic Global YouTube channel. You might just have a look at TikTok too while you're there uh, for commentary on various passages of scripture that I uh, put up from time to time uh, and some other material. And you may join me in person in the building, 8 and 6, Tuesday to Saturday. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. A song of mercy and truth. O God, will you not give us life again? That your people may rejoice in you. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Truly, his salvation is near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. That truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness look down from heaven. Righteousness shall go before him and direct his steps in the way. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. You'll find the Psalter at the back of the book, the appointed Psalms this evening, Numbers 9 and 10. Psalms 9 and 10. You, Lord, have never failed those who seek you. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of all your marvellous works. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will make music to your name, O Most High. When my enemies are driven back, they stumble and perish at your presence. For you have maintained my right and my cause. You sat on your throne, giving righteous judgment. You have rebuked the nations and destroyed the wicked. You have blotted out their name forever and ever. The enemy was utterly laid waste. You uprooted their cities. Their very memory has perished. But the Lord shall endure forever. He has made fast his throne for judgment. For he shall rule the world with righteousness and govern the peoples with equity. Then will the Lord be a refuge for the oppressed a refuge in the time of trouble. Those who know your name will put their trust in you, for you, Lord, have never failed those who seek you. Sing praises to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Declare among the peoples the things he has done. The avenger of blood has remembered them. He did not forget the cry of the oppressed. Have mercy upon me, O Lord. Consider the trouble I suffer from those who hate me, you that lift me up from the gates of death, that I may tell all your praises in the gates of the city of Zion and rejoice in your salvation. The nations shall sink into the pit of their making, and in the snare which they set will their own foot be taken. The Lord makes himself known by his acts of justice. The wicked are snared in the works of their own hands. They shall return to the land of darkness, all the nations that forget God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten, and the hope of the poor shall not perish for ever. Arise, O Lord, and let not mortals have the upper hand. Let the nations be judged before your face. Put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but mortal. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You, Lord, have never failed those who seek you. You 
You, Lord, have never failed those who seek you. Why stand so far off, O Lord? Why hide yourself in time of trouble? The wicked in their pride persecute the poor. Let them be caught in the schemes they have devised. The wicked boast of their heart's desire. The covetous curse and revile the Lord. The wicked in their arrogance say God will not avenge it. In all their scheming God counts for nothing. They are stubborn in all their ways. Your judgments are far above out of their sight. They scoff at all their adversaries. They say in their heart I shall not be shaken. No harm shall ever happen to me. Their mouth is full of cursing, deceit and fraud. Under their tongue lie mischief and wrong. They lurk in the outskirts and in dark alleys they murder the innocent. Their eyes are ever watching for the helpless. They lie in wait like a lion in his den. They lie in wait to seize the poor. They seize the poor when they get them into their net. The innocent are broken and humbled before them. The helpless fall before their power. They say in their heart God has forgotten. <coughs> and he hides his face away, he will never see it. Arise, O Lord God, and lift up your hand. Forget not the poor. Why should the wicked be scornful of God? Why should they say in their hearts you will not avenge it? Surely you behold trouble and misery. You see it and take it into your own hand. The helpless commit themselves to you, for you are the helper of the orphan. Break the power of the wicked and malicious. Search out their wickedness until you find none. The Lord shall reign for ever and ever. The nation shall perish from his land. Lord, you will hear the desire of the poor. You will incline your ear to the fullness of their heart. To give justice to the orphan and oppressed so that people are no longer driven in terror from the land. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, <coughs> as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You, Lord, have never failed those who seek you. Scrolling past our first reading, and indeed the link I will use in a moment to the canticle, a Song of the Holy City, evening prayer on Tuesday in ordinary time. I saw the Holy City coming down out of heaven from God. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and the sea was no more. And I saw the Holy City, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them, they shall be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more. For the former things have passed away. And the one who sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honour and glory and might for ever and ever. Amen. I saw the holy city coming down out of heaven from God. So if you scroll back a little, if you're following electronically, at the foot of the um, scripture presented, which comes from the Apocrypha, you'll find a link through to Micah chapter 2. Uh, Micah is in the prophecy section, the minor prophets, uh, towards the end of the Hebrew scripture. So if you turn to two-thirds of the way through your Bible, assuming you have both covenants in front of you, and move back towards the beginning, Micah should be in there somewhere. Do you use an index if uh, Micah doesn't open for you? In fact, I could just look on my... Um, Contents of my online Bible page to uh, give you a bit of a clue. So it's about six books in from the back, more or less, at the end of the prophecy section. We're looking for the book of Micah. Within the book of Micah, chapter 2, large number in the margin, chapter number 2 in the book of Micah. As I say, the link underneath the scripture presented will take you through to it if you are following online. And as for those who devise wickedness and evil deeds on their beds, when the morning comes, they perform it because it is in their power. They covet fields and seize them, houses and take them away. They oppress household on house, people and their inheritance. Therefore, thus says the Lord, now I am devising against this family an evil from which you cannot remove your necks. You shall not walk quarterly, for it will be an evil time. On that day, they shall take up a taunt song against you and wail with bitter lamentation and say, we are utterly ruined. The Lord alters the inheritance of my people, how he removes it from me. Among our captors he parcels out our fields, therefore you will have no one to cast to the line by lot in the assembly of the Lord. Do not preach, thus they preach, one should not preach of such things, disgrace will not overtake us. <clears throat> should this be said, O house of Jacob, is the Lord's patience exhausted, are these my, his doings? Do not my words do good to one who walks uprightly. But you rise up against my people as an enemy, you strip the robe from the peaceful, from those who pass by trustingly with no thought of war. The women of my people you drive out from their pleasant houses, from their young women you take away my glory for ever. Arise and go, for this is no place to rest, because of uncleanness that destroys with a grievous destruction. 
If someone were to go about uttering empty falsehoods, saying, I will preach to you of wine and strong drink, strong drink, such a one would be the preacher for this people. I will surely gather all of you, O Jacob. I will gather the survivors of Israel. I will set them together like sheep in a fold, like a flock in its pasture. It will resound with people. The one who breaks out will go up before them. They will break through and pass the gate, going out by it. By it. Their king will pass on before them, the Lord at their head. <clears throat> So I'm not sure when this was written, or if it was written at another time when it was set, but I suspect it was around the time of the exile, um, and or set to have been read as if it was written beforehand, even if it was written afterwards. And uh, coming out of exile, which is really when the Jewish nation was properly established, is my understanding of it. Um, Scriptures are presented as if um, God's people were already a people before they even went into, or coming on to be a people, even before they went into Egypt, if they did go there. And when they came out, they were established. Um, but in many ways, I think that was a, a myth created and generated as God's people came out of uh, exile in Babylon, which is more certain, as a, um, if you like, an invented history. It might be an oral tradition, might have been true, who knows. But it was certainly represented then. Um, as an opportunity, I think, to direct and give a heritage, a tradition to um, the leadership, trying to control and direct God's people coming out of exile, they could refer to and uh, draw on for teaching. However, here we have um, a prophet at around the time of the exile, before, during, or after. First of all, to be heard by those who are um, not living as they ought, as people with privilege, um, and they will see their plans taken from them. They will see the lands that they were gathering and collecting, that they were stealing from others, taken by captors, taken as they go into exile. The lands that they strive to steal and uh, take away uh, mischievously from those amongst whom they lived, to cheat, to increase their wealth and land holding, their land is going to be given away by their captors and parceled out in front of their eyes, and they will be mocked. The middle paragraph tells us how those people that Micah is talking to receive his words, and they tell him that they shouldn't be saying speaking like this because uh, their people, their nation, will survive and thrive, and their rule and their authority, their privilege, likewise. Um, uh, Micah's uh, retort to them is what you need is a prophet who tells you to just go out and drink a lot um, because then you'd welcome them. And in the end, Micah would say to God's people that those who believe, those who trust, will find themselves protected and part of a believing community um, and their God will be their sovereign and will lead them. And there'll be a multitude, past it resounding with people. So um, for us, I guess we should be encouraged to, like Micah, speak out against injustice, against the wicked and the privileged and... Uh, Recognise that our message will not be necessarily heard, but understand that in fact in the end God will vindicate and all will be well for us and for our communities. To, the, to uh, our next reading then, John 17 from 6 to 19. Um, if you are following electronics, I've just clicked on morning prayer, then evening prayer, and it kind of resets back to where we should be. Scroll through to John 17, chapter 6, uh, John chapter 17, verse 6. And if you're following the Holy Bible uh, with both covenants, John is the fourth gospel, and the gospels open the last third. The gospels are four eyewitness accounts. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, written for the gospel of John, and within John chapter 17, large number in the margin, chapter 17, and we're reading from verse 6. The verses are the small numbers in the text, as you may have gathered. Jesus looked up to heaven and said, I have made your name known to those who you, whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, for the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that they came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf, I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. Now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me, I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost, so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. 
but now I am coming to you and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my, have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth, your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they may also may be sanctified in truth. So um, when I read this, I think to myself, this should be called the Lord's Prayer. Um, but the prayer that was the disciples' prayer, we call the Lord's Prayer, um, historically, and uh, as not a reason why. But uh, we know what we mean when we say the Lord's Prayer. But uh, this is actually the Lord praying for uh, the disciples. I think tomorrow we'll have him praying for us, those who believe, as a result of the disciples whom he's praying here. Um, but this is just an extraordinary, typical of John, very repetitive, sounds like a sort of a, a repeated chant, if you're familiar with Taze or um, Hildegard. It just sounds like it's sort of a warp and a weave, um, ideally perhaps set to music, read quietly in a darkened room with incense and candlelight going on, uh, read a number of times with a number of people at Ignatian, Lectio Divina, um, or as they call a version of it in this diocese, um, dwelling in the word, and just allow those ideas and the thoughts to just merge and meld in one's brain, um, because that is how involved we are with God. I think of the Johannine community as being mystical, uh, being uh, prayerful, being a religious community, and uh, so they're not as kind of ordered and logical, perhaps, as um, other writings of Scripture, but we just have to allow the truth to sort of well up in us by the Spirit, that um, the disciples, the apostles, then the leaders, bishops in our own day, are as much part of the Trinity and God as God is as much part of the Trinity and us as all creation, bound up into this extraordinary idea of us being sanctified as Jesus, even God incarnate, is sanctified. So we are sanctified as all people and all creation. Um, we have the words, those that believe and those that are affected by the word um, are not part of the world. And here it's not the world that is good, but it's, um, as in Genesis 1, God made the world and saw that it was good and rested. But this is a um, pejorative term for all that is bad in the world. Um, like the wickedness that we heard of in our first reading. So the world is not bad, but this is those authorities in the world, a little bit like John talks about Jews. That doesn't mean all Jews and all Jews being bad, but it's those negatively associated with those that would believe on Jesus. And so we just have to have um, that kind of, uh, what's the word, the caveat, or qualifying uh, word associated with world as we read it here. But we are gathered, we are protected. Jesus talks about going. This would have been written at a time after Jesus had died and resurrected, so wasn't as around as we would have expected him to be in, as John was writing, as if he were writing it at the time that it is set. Um, Jesus actually said, uh, where is it? I have been glorified in them. I am no longer in the world. Extraordinary to think that uh, the writers of this were of the view that Jesus would think that Jesus was being glorified in those that followed and believed in the disciples and in the apostles, but um, it is they are, we are. Um, and it's echoed, these ideas are echoed in other Gospels. I had a christening at the weekend and I open, I usually use the scripture for christenings of uh, Jesus' baptism and I end where um, the Gospeler says, you are my child, my beloved, uh, in whom I am well pleased. And I say that with great pathos and look at everybody as I can and make eye contact with all those that are gathered. <clears throat> And that's kind of what we need to hear from the scripture too. To the response tree then that follows, the evening prayer on Tuesday, open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Lead me in the path of your commandments, that I may see the wonders of your law. Glory to the Father and to the Son and the Holy Spirit. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. The Song of Mary. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones, 
and lifting up the lady. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. Father, Son, Spirit, three in one, one in three, we thank you for um, this past day and all those moments that have been an inspiration to us where we have felt valued, worthy, uh, connected, engaged with all those things that we have uh, done that have inspired and energised us. And we thank you for the, for the fact that we are the people we are because of what you've done for us and made us and that that has resonated with good things today. And we thank you for that pairing and the inspiration that that has given us. We also may recognise, looking back past, uh, over the past day, that there have been um, brokenness and uh, exclusion. We not have felt your closeness. People might have been unkind to us or to you or to others in a way that has brought us down. And if that has been our experience, we come to you praying for your healing, your protection, your forgiveness. From Release International... Earlier this year, two pastors were arrested, along with their wives and children, the youngest of whom is two. We prayed that those two families would be released, and that God would guard their spiritual, physical and emotional well-being in Eritrea. Turning to Christian aid, we pray for their work on community-based health interventions in Nigeria. We pray that will be a blessing, and uh, will cause bridges to be built between the different ethnicities and religions in that place, and give Christian aid and their work an opportunity to comment and support and encourage and the state to establish rule of law that all may live peaceably there. Pray for the Holy Land with the Church of England, God of compassion and justice, we cry out to you for all who suffer in the Holy Land today. For your precious children, Israelis and Palestinian, traumatised and in fear of their lives, and at those Lebanese and Iranians and all who are involved. For the families of the bereaved, for those who have seen images they will never forget, for those anxiously waiting for news, despairing with each passing day. Joint Public Issues Team, pray for Ukraine. God of all with alarm and concern, we bring before you the military intervention in Ukraine. In a world you made for peace and flourishing, we lament the use of armed force. Suffolk Diocese, we pray for uh, um, bishops, Martin, or Bishop Martin as he uh, moves towards retirement. Pray for the committee seeking replacement for him, that that person will be for stipendiary clergy, for uh, maintenance and promotion of the use of our buildings uh, as they stand, and for the democratic structure that we already have in the Church of England as the basis and bedrock and a foundation on which strategic development funding initiatives may be um, supported and from through, in which they may grow accountably and that we will not be held up in competition with such ex, uh, fresh expressions. And we pray for our new bishops that they will be uh, a blessing to our county and communities, businesses, environment, the church, schools, hospitals and the like. We pray for Archdeacon Rich and me as Rural Dean uh, and our capacity to uh, support and promote uh, our church wardens and uh, ministers above and beyond the areas that we have immediate responsibility for, for those patches that we cover. But, uh, we thank you for his role in chaplaincy and mine, uh, having had a police meeting this morning. And our diocesan prayer cycle invites us to pray Today for Eric, who is lead clergy person in Bramford with the little Blakenham, Balaam and Nettlestead parishes. Pray for those ministers, lay and ordained that work with him there and the church water treasurer and secretaries that they may thrive and prosper. We pray to you for the aims of our diocese of growing in God. And so we pray that it will be understood that that is what everybody wants and uh, that strategy can be helpful and unhelpful in equal measure and that uh, we need to be, I would suggest, we need to be supported as parochial clergy, uh, just living and being and, and allowing God to do what God will do. And whilst I understand that uh, we not need to be encouraged to be um, kind and friendly and open, I'm not sure that we really need to be doing much more than that, to be fair, but uh, where that is an inspiration, where that is helpful, uh, we thank you for it. And uh, we pray for calm and peace during the presidential elections in the United States of America, pray that both sides will be moderate in their speech, that democracy will flourish, and indeed truth, that policy will um, be the important thing, and that America will be able to vote 
to become the people and nation they would like to be in, in the world and uh, at home. But those values that they hold dear and they think should be enshrined and promoted by them as a nation, they vote for those and uh, not necessarily for the personalities, unless of course the personalities align with those views and opinions also. Pray for the people and businesses associated with the addresses in Halesworth of Walpole Road, Bramfield Road, Dunton Road, Wissett Road, Norwich Road, Key Street and Holton Road. Pray where people's lives are not going so well. They'll have the support and encouragement that they need from whatever agencies, and including us as church. Where things are going well, may people uh, be part of the answer and not part of the problem for the communities in which they find themselves. And uh, maybe even turn to support um, us as church here. We're looking for a treasurer, we're looking for a project manager to run the recreation regeneration scheme. Um, and uh, to promote the use and accessibility of the church here. So we thank you for that. And the businesses that are based in or serve those addresses, we pray they'll continue to, to be able to provide goods, jobs and services to promote the local economy. We pray for Claire, Veronica, Jean, Felicity, David, John, Anne, Molly, Francis, Joan, Val, Brian, Carol, Paul, Ginny, John, Vera, Jeff, Pam, Kim, Cynthia, Rachel, Jude, Irene, and others we know for whom life is a problem. Actually, Jeff, I recently discovered, um, has died. God rest his soul, so I'll remove him from that. But those others, um, we ask God's blessing for and on. Move Jeff through to uh, those who have died. We pray that where there is hope, where there will be restoration, where there will be um, a positive end point, we pray that that will be uh, hoped for and achieved. And where that is not the case, we pray that there will be um, markers and uh, good experiences, good memories established, good processes and procedures, that uh, good death, a good end um, will be achieved. Whether there ends up being a restart in a new relationship, a new house, new work, or a new life on the other side of the grave, however that works. Um, we grant our support and goodwill to these people whom you mentioned and those not mentioned whom we know and love. Pray to you for Valerie, Jesse, Mary, Lee, Rosemary, Eric, Valerie, Beryl, Lynn, Peter, Brian, Audrey, Joan, Ben, Jeff and all others who have recently died, including those who have died suddenly and unprepared through sickness, violence, neglect, accident, those that have taken their own lives. We thank you for the people that we have lost and loved, those that have served you here. All whose ears mind for us at this time, we ask that according to your promises to humanity, you grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. And uh, we pray for ourselves and all who mourn the loss of a loved one or a change in life chances. We pray that we will hear your inspired words spoken with your incarnate mouth by the breath of your spirit. And that will bring light in our darkness and order in our emotional chaos. Lord, hear us, Lord, graciously hear us. Pemponero hodet na cera kašla basam na hadzam basam na jodi šeru esini kana malazana. Pemponero pohodi još na kala me jodi špehe mas para basam na jošen sokali na mas para vat. Im kunhano esaj kedi rak mas para vat nešto na mas vat kunsi bolu uma alamana. Im nešto rufo hiu tošen na kala manjera vat hasi mene kašenif. Pemponero hod na kasa mra vat hima tošen na hadzam ja kašna na mas vat. Tini te kedi rak mas para vat jen po la matu hes anis kala fes. she gets in your room, but who must man them in your name? See, but who must man them? Abide with us, Lord, for it is evening, and the day is drawing to a close. Abide with us and with your whole church in the evening of the day, in the evening of life, in the evening of the world. Abide with us and with all your faithful ones, O Lord, in time and in eternity. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to those joining us on YouTube.